<laughs> well, I cannot believe that worked. Today, I'm going to show you how to install a debloated copy of Windows 11 using nothing but a factory, unmodified Windows 11 ISO. Stay tuned. Now, there's lots of ways to debloat a copy of Windows. You can go the hard route and create your own debloated ISO, which I've shown how to do several times on this channel. And you can also take the easy way out and just install a debloated ISO created by someone else. <laughs> now, downloading shifty ISOs from the internet is never a good idea. And it's not even to disparage the hard work put into many of these projects, but attackers can do the same thing. And it's hard to tell the difference sometimes. But what if you could install a debloated copy of Windows 11 with just an unmodified factory ISO? Now, you know what? I am not talking about debloating Windows after it's installed, which is another option. And I've also covered that in the past, but it still requires third-party software in many cases. No, uh-uh. What I'm talking about today is using the factory Windows 11 ISO to install a debloated copy of Windows 11 by only changing one setting during setup. But first, we gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now. On with the video. Now, I heard about this method months ago, and I think even a few of you guys have mentioned it in the comments of other videos. However, I'd never tested it because part of me kind of thought it was too good to be true. I mean, come on. There's no way Microsoft would have left a method in Windows setup to install a completely debloated copy of Windows 11, right? Well, no, actually. That's not quite true. However, it's pretty close. Let's jump on the computer real quick and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are on Windows 11. As you can see, this is not a debloated copy of Windows 11. It still has all TikTok, Instagram, Messenger, and all the garbage that Microsoft includes in Windows 11. So what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm actually going to be installing a new copy of Windows 11 using VirtualBox. This is just gonna be a virtual machine just so I can show this process because ultimately, we're not gonna actually be using this operating system. We're just gonna be testing the install and show that it's debloated once it's installed. So the the first thing that we need to do is set up a virtual machine. So to do that within VirtualBox, all you do is go click on the new icon right here. And then from here, we're gonna call it Windows 11. If we can spell it right here. And then for the ISO image, I've already downloaded this. This ISO is just gonna be right here in our downloads directory. And this is, like I said, a factory Windows 11 ISO. I created this one using the media creation tool. So. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna go through the process of doing that, so you're just gonna have to trust me. However, this is, in fact, a factory copy of Windows 11. And then once we pick that, we're gonna go ahead and hit Next. And then from here, we gotta tweak some of these settings right here in order to install Windows 11 from within VirtualBox. So the first thing is, is we need some more memory, so we're gonna give it four gigs, 4,096. And then we're gonna give it two CPUs. Then in the next screen here, I'm gonna give it 100 gigs of hard drive space, just enough to fit Windows on. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit finish. And then from within VirtualBox, what you have to do is click on settings, then go into system, and you have to go right here, enable EFI and enable secure boot, and then hit okay. And at this point we can hit start and we can start the install process. and push any key to boot from the CD. And this is gonna be essentially just like we're installing it on any piece of regular hardware. Any kind of computer is gonna be the same process. We're just doing it virtually. Now, the first thing that you have to do is on this page, believe it or not, this is the hack. And what you do is right here where it says time and currency format, it says English United States. What you need to do is just change this to English world. 
and that's it. And then go ahead and hit next. Now on this page, what we have to do is we have to actually kind of trick the Windows 11 ISO to allow us to install it in a virtual machine because unfortunately this virtual machine doesn't support TPM. So to do that, all you gotta do is hit Shift F10 to open up your command prompt. And then from there, just type regedit. And then once regedit is open, we wanna go to local machine. Then we wanna go into system. And then from there, we wanna go into setup. And then from setup, we wanna right click, create a new key. Then this key is going to be lab config. And then from there, we wanna create a new DWORD 32-bit value. And that is going to be bypass TPM check. And then from there, we're gonna open this one up and we're gonna change this value to one. Now, depending on your system, if you wanna bypass the RAM or secure boot, all you'd have to do is just add another key. So if you go here, add a D word value, you can type bypass RAM check, just like this. And then you open that one up, same thing. Open it up, give it a value of one. And then if you wanna bypass secure boot, all you have to do is type Bypass, secure, boot, check. And then from there, change that to a one as well. And then once you add these, these are the three different options you have. So once you get everything added, just like you need, go ahead and hit close, close, and then we can hit the install button. And at this point, it'll bypass those different requirement checks. So at this point, I don't have a product key, so I'm just gonna hit, I don't have a product key. However, if you need a product key, then go to today's sponsor and pick yourself up one. So then pick your version of Windows. I'm just gonna go ahead and use Home and hit Next. And then at this point, accept the agreement, hit Next. And as you'll see, we're essentially just going through the regular setup process. Now from the upgrade, now I always like to create my own partitions, but every time I do that, people scream at me. So I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm just gonna hit Next and we'll set up Windows this way. However, just to let you guys know that when you're setting up Windows, I like to set up my partitions by creating a new partition and then formatting it because there's been a few times where I've been setting up Windows that I have gotten a messed up install because I've done that. So that's the reason why I set up my own partitions first. But you set up Windows the way you want. And if you break your computer, well, then you can fix it. <laughs> there you go. So it's going to take us a little bit in order to get Windows set up. So at this point, I'm going to flip ahead into the end of the installation and we'll continue from there. Okay, so now we're here back in setup. Now this very first stage right here is gonna give you an error and it's gonna be because you changed the setting at the very beginning with currency and language and whatnot. So we're just gonna have to sit here and wait for it to error and then we can skip it and move on. And there we go, something clearly went wrong. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just hit skip. And then at this point, the rest of the setup should act like normal. So we're just gonna, yes, our keyboard method is gonna be US, go ahead and hit next. We're gonna hit skip right here. And then everything else is essentially the same as any other Windows install. However, I'm gonna set this up without a Microsoft account so we can test one of our old methods because there's a lot of people telling me lately that those aren't working anymore. So I have to find out if that's true. Okay, it says your PC will restart before you continue. Go ahead and let it restart. Like you had a choice anyway, right? Okay, so name your device. If you'd like to, you can name yours. I'm gonna skip mine for now. And then right here, it wants us to sign into a Microsoft account. So we click sign in, and I'm gonna use my easy method of just putting nonsense in here. So I'm gonna put rich for a username, and then for the password, I'm just gonna type password. We're gonna hit sign in, and oops, something went wrong. And local account, see? It still works fine. I don't know what those people are talking about in the comments. My video is still pretty relevant. Okay, so go ahead and enter your name. I'm not gonna enter a password. And then from this screen, normally I would uncheck all these boxes, but I'm not really interested in that right now because we just wanna get into Windows. So just go ahead and hit accept. And then from here, it should take us a minute and then we'll be greeted with our Windows desktop. Okay, and there we go. Now we're in Windows, and as you can see, something looks a little bit different here. If you notice it, 
they got none of the default bloated icons that you normally would see. So if we go ahead and click on my regular Windows 11 start menu, as you can see, there's a lot of garbage in this one. But if we look in the VM, there's nothing. Now, if we click on all apps, you will notice that if you scroll down right here, it does have some of Microsoft's default bloatware. And for these right here, you can just right click and hit uninstall. And there's also another really weird problem too. So if we scroll down here and we click on the store, which is somewhere in here, Microsoft store, there you go. So if you open the Microsoft store, you'll notice that the store is not available in your country or region. And this has to do with the setting we changed at the very beginning. So we'll go ahead and close the store and then I'll show you how to set that. So go into settings, then from settings, you wanna go into time and language. And then from there, you wanna to go to language and region. And then from here where it says country or region, it says world, you just wanna set that to whatever your actual region is. So for me, it's gonna be the United States. And then from there, we go ahead and click on the Microsoft store. And as you can see, it works just fine at this point. I have to admit, that was about the easiest debloat I've ever done on a Microsoft operating system. And I honestly don't see Microsoft changing this in the future because it's kind of by design. Let me explain. The bloat in Windows is based on region. Different regions will have different bloatware based on what partnerships Microsoft has in those different regions. Yes, that's right. Microsoft is paid to add that bloatware to Windows and other companies want their programs to come pre-installed with Windows and those partnerships are different based on what region the operating system is being installed for. So when you choose world as your region, you are, you're essentially picking a generic region that isn't based on any specific area. So no bloatware gets installed. However, as I alluded to at the beginning of the video, this is only kind of a partial debloat. One thing that isn't removed is Microsoft's telemetry, which happens to be one of the main reasons why people use debloated copies of Windows to begin with. So if you would like to handle that, then check out this video where I show you how to disable telemetry in Windows 11 without any third-party apps. This is an older video, but still the best way to disable telemetry. As always, you guys have a great day.